Welcome to game three between Rancor and Jedi One. Been bad about checking the map today. Not sure why. This is on uh, good night. Upper right corner, we have Rancor starting as the White Zerg. A little bit scattered today. I think I didn't sleep very well last night. Bottom right corner, we have Jedi One as the Green Protoss. Dad problems. I had a little bit of fuss happen at midnight, a little bit of fuss happen at one. Just kind of ended up disturbing sleep overall. Just disturbed sleep a little bit overall. <clears throat> I blame her, but probably it's more that I had caffeine too late in the day and I need to just not drink caffeine past noon. That's what it comes down to. I'm going to make a mental note of that. Take care of myself. Anyway, Jetty One setting up a pylon at the natural expansion. I don't know who to call on this map. Rancor showing that he too can catch his opponents off guard. Jedi One, I think as far as what I've seen thus far, Jedi One does a fantastic job macroing. He actually has a very, I like his persistent style. He's got grit, like the grit. Grit tends to get you far. I feel like actually out of all of the qualities, yeah, stubbornness <laughs> seems to be the one that plays the best in Brood War and Rewarded. Overpool opening here for Rancor. Gateway first for Jedi One. So he's going to have to keep Zealots back and be a little bit more defensive. One critical thing is going to be scouting for both players. Overlord is making its way to the upper left-hand corner first. No drone scout for Rancor. Probably just going to scout with his Zerglings. He's moving out this drone to go ahead and I assume grab his natural expansion. And as far as these openers, I'm trying to think like and actually pocketing this drone to that corner just in case a probe was sneaking into this base. It looks like he is going to go ahead and scout with this drone. Grabbing that hatchery now. And it looks like Rancor is going to get first scout. So moving in with this drone is going to see the gateway first opener. Let's see if that provokes six Zerglings or just the four. Looks like he wants to go ahead and just do it a one-to-one -one situation. Just going for the four Zerglings. Which also indicates that he's not looking to get aggressive inside Jedi One's base. Never mind. Adding a additional pair of Zerglings behind that. Jedi One opting to go ahead and block his ramp since he has been scouted and he has no information on his opponent. So as far as grabbing his Nexus behind this, actually before that, so grabbing Nexus after that second Zealot being created. So that's going to slow his economy down a bit as well. Zerglings grouping up. Jedi One moving his own probe scout across. If this probe ends up getting taken out by these Zerglings, it is going to be Danger Town for Jedi One. Rancor looking to adjust does manage to take that probe scout out. So he is in the dark. Third hatchery has been grabbed. And extractor has been taken as well. So now Jedi One playing in the dark in the mid game. Still doesn't have additional infrastructure to block his front door. And so a little bit out of position to deal with these Zerglings. Rancor might be able to micro a little bit across. He's trying to fan these Zealots out. Now Rancor, keep in mind, he's denied a lot of scouting information. There's three zealots on the line that will win against these zerglings. That probe trying to draw, trying to find room to sneak across and draw those zerglings in. One zealot blade to the face. That probe scout being jumped on. It's wiped out. The zealots not in position. And the zerglings starting to flood through now for Rancor. Regrouping. One zealot down. Forges up, but the zerglings have breached the ramp. In 9 times out of 10, in this situation, it's going to be a Zerg win. Disrupted economy. Critically, that gas being interrupted. Rancor did not go to go to lair, it looks like. Go ahead and double check this. Yeah, no lair. Oh, not babysitting his Zerglings, though. And so a handful of them getting picked off. Nice defense by Jedi 1. Still several probes getting picked off here. Zergling's going to retreat. Cybernetic score warping in. Worker count just about even. That was a very late Nexus as it was. I like the early transfer. A cannon still warping in. And the Zergling's just going to try to sit in the corner. The Zealots going to chase them from here. I'm looking for... Try to keep an eye back in Rancor's base for additional adjustments. He does have the Hydral Extend down to potentially go for a bust. In his main, he does have the standard 9 drones. Is starting to... 
filter drones to that natural. As far as the, what is 9 plus 7 plus 3? 19? So two drones behind that. Technically. And also keep in mind, three of them are in gas. So well behind where that standard bus situation would be. Jedi 1 moving out as he's cleared out those Zerglings with five Zealots, though. Going double Stargate as a follow-up. There is a sunken colony on the front door. So there's the three drones there. There's the uh, seven drones at the natural. But right now, Rancor's still droning. And Jedi 1 might have caught him with his pants down. Rancor also supply capped himself here. Overlord just now coming online. Some additional Zerglings being built. Trying to attempt these Zealots piecemeal into the Sutton Colony. Able to do so. I'm, I feel like that was a dangerous thing to do. Especially not having sufficient Zerglings to block the ramp. Zealots taking a bit of damage, but they're just going to go ahead and march right in. Get scouting information, economic disruption. Rancor dropping the ball a little bit. Losing two drones in the midst of this. A slew of Zerglings being produced. They're going to wander some drones, battle drones... Grouping the fight, doing a drone drill back across the main to try to support the Zerglings. A decent defense from Rancor, but still had to build a lot of Zerglings, which is allowing Jedi 1 to kind of sneak back into this. He's pumping double Corsair. Still no Hydralisks that I'm seeing. This is going to pin the advantage of this. This still pins Rancor back. So where he might have wanted to attack that front door. Oh, he's just going Zerglings at this stage. Where he might have wanted to attack that front door. With the Hydralisks, he's going to have to actually sit back and defend his Overlord count. Otherwise, could end up being a disaster situation. Some cannons, plenty of cannons to defend against this. Jedi 1 easily going to be able to get this cannon line up before any Hydralisks are a threat. And Rancor now going to go ahead and morph his third base to layer, trying to hide it out of position. Single Corsair being pushed back. We have a... I'll call this... At what size does a Corsair army become a fleet? I'll say three, just so I can call it a fleet. Fleet of Corsairs in the middle of the map. They're going to still take a little bit of damage. Jedi 1 pressing against this. He's going to see that lair morphing. Starting to work on these overlords. They can melt through these overlords pretty rapidly. Not able to get the last hit. On that, moving towards the main, a slew of overlords being built by Rancor. However, maybe an over-dedication there. I think he was expecting more Corsair to be flooding out. Going to end up losing them as they spawned. So the Corsair, so where they did not get a lot of overlord kills, they did force a lot of overlords to be built before Rancor really needed them. Second layer being morphed. This feels like a, must have been a misclick or a mistake. Double layer, unless this is going to be a rapid Hydralisk drop from Rancor. Looking to get both Phenomenized Carapace and Overlord drop back to back. Plenty of cannons on the front. Level 1 weapons already finished. Level 1 armor on the way. Some gateways being filled in. The disadvantage of going Corsair heavy is you end up further behind as far as your ability to take a third base if you don't end up with map control with DTs. I don't see a DT fielded just yet. It looks like one is being built on this forward gateway. However, Rancor is already in position to go ahead and drone up at his expansions to defend this. He hasn't grabbed a second gas as of yet. I'm curious to see when that second layer finishes, if it was a misclick, or if we're going to see both upgrades simultaneously. Fifth hatchery morphing in. So we are seeing five hatch Hydra. So both layers are up. Now, if we see a Spire drop, or if we see Lurker Tech being upgraded, we know it was just a mistake. It was a misclick. If we see the Phenomenized Carapace and the Ventral Sacks upgrade immediately, we know otherwise. Hydralisks moving forward. However, that DT is in the line. The Corsair is getting that natural expansion with those Cors with the Hydralisks. And right now, Jedi 1 just seems to be out-positioning Rancor. Rancor scattering to get his Hydralisks back to the main, but losing... At least, actually ending up in the red. So might have ended up losing more than I thought. So that's at least four overlords down. That's 400 minerals of damage. Dark Templar sneaking toward the north. It looked like Rancor might have wanted to take a hatchery there. 
single zergling also camping that three o'clock base there's the phenomenized carapace and i think this was just a misclick at this stage although it's being upgraded here we'll keep an eye on that corsair continuing to press forward I'm wondering if jedi one's going to have similar puzzlement this overlord exposed so that's going to get wiped out He's done a really good job of inflicting economic damage with this and keeping these Corsair alive. This has been the same three Corsair this entire time. Drone taking out the 12 o'clock location. A lot of Zergling kills, a lot of other units being killed by that Dark Templar. Sorry, I missed that action. Jedi One, with a lot of gateways, is filtering in a lot of these units. Has double forge, so he actually might end up rolling with an upgrade advantage in the midst of this and still putting on a clinic with these Corsair. The Hydalists just have not been able to swat them out of the air. So Jedi won with a big advantage. He stymied Rancor's economy through the midst of this. He's gotten a pretty decent-sized army fielded. Tacking on additional gateways. Zelt leg speed not that far behind. He's going to have an upgrade advantage. I don't even think an evolution chamber is down. A six hatchery being planted. And finally an evolution chamber for Rancor. He's behind in the overall supply count. He's behind in the worker count. He does have three bases. But these Corsair have just really flustered him, honestly. I don't know another way to put it. He's been running around chasing these Corsair, finally taking them out at this stage, but not before, honestly, they did an immense amount of damage. The Zealots wandering through a big Hydalisk army, diving towards that natural expansion. There are High Templar here. I think Phenomenai's Carapace did finish. The Dark Templar is out of position. It might be actually be able to just, well, there is a Sun Colony here to go ahead and engage that. The Zealots walking up to engage any Hydralisks that try to walk up the ramp. High Templar, slowly walking to follow. Zergling still camping out that 3 o'clock. And yeah, the Hydralisks is going to go ahead and back off. From Rancor's point of view, he doesn't know what's up there. And it's a sizable army. Yeah, morphing lurkers. So a lot of problems for Rancor. First of all, morph this layer didn't need to. So a bit of a misclick there. Had a lot of trouble dealing with this Dark Templar, and the Corsairs. He does have map control now. He does have level 1 weapons for his Hydralisks, but level 2 weapons, level 1 armor are already there for Jedi 1. And Jedi 1 is got a lot of infrastructure, has got a worker lead, and is continuing to macro behind this. Also getting a shuttle might go for some storm drops in the midst of this. Zealot's positioning, engaging the army across the north, Beautiful Psy Storm. That was a golden Psy Storm right there. Catching, really softening up that Hydralisk army. Now the probe. Going to wander up, take the mineral only. Potentially could go ahead and take that 3 o'clock as well. Rancor checking out that 12 o'clock, I think, for Dark Templar. Before opting to go ahead and grab it himself. He's sitting... What is that? Four, five, six. Six hatcheries overall. Is that right? Yeah, two, 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 six. At six hatch Hydra in the midst of this, is probably going to sit on this, but usually what you want to be doing is, is denying additional expansions, and that is not happening in the midst of this. Jedi One. Building a handful of additional Dark Templar in the midst of this. Missing a bit of a macro cycle. Does have observers fielded. And this is, at, this is as Lurkers are finally being fielded, by the way. So this isn't even in a situation where Rancor can be aggressive. Rancor grabbing that 12 o'clock location. He just wants to stay ahead in the overall economic run and play it kind of classic Rancor. It's going to try to sneak back. This is, I think, the weakest part of Rancor's game is oftentimes where he does not have map control. He doesn't have uh, army advantage where he's behind in upgrades so his army just doesn't hit as hard. And he... Trying to find space to kind of, I guess any player would be, have trouble in that situation. But having trouble, like, finding space to macro or find catch-up mechanics behind it. Jedi One moving out, tapping that army, baiting some Hydalisks into some Psy Storm. That's going to cost them their lives. Mineral only is up and mining some cannons in position. And Jedi One, yeah, comfortably trying to sit back into a long-term macro game. Observers joining the fray as well. Rancor grabbing... What will be his third gas at that 12 o'clock location, also grabbing an ex another expansion in the upper left. 43 workers getting a queen's nest, so he wants to go ahead and press this. A huge, this is a 
absolute traffic jam at that natural expansion. However, we have a shuttle full of Dark Templar wandering up. Three o'clock Nexus being grabbed. A distractionary attack from Jedi 1 in the middle of this map. So Rancor isn't as aware as the Dark Templar being escorted directly up to the main. Does Rancor realize this is happening as he's engaging in the middle here? Beautiful size storms. Does not look like it. And keep in mind, you don't end up, when the Dark Templar do the one-shot kill with this, I do not believe you end up with the notification. So the main getting obliterated. Every single drone being taken out. This is now a notification. The Hydra Sten going to get wiped out. Double Lair maybe being an advantage here. Evolution Chamber going to get wiped out. Hydralisk's finally coming up to engage. This Dark Temple delaying it. So a lot of tech being lost. A lot of units being lost. And a counter attack from Jedi 1 moving up in the midst of this. He can go ahead and take out that 12 o'clock base. This is another decent Sim City of the North. There's not enough defenses here. There is a lurker. Maybe an observer can come alongside. Jedi 1 instead pressing a little bit too far, far forward with those observers. One of them Actually, both of them getting... Uh, sorry, one is escaping to the south. He needs to make sure he preserves it. Moving into that natural expansion, Rancor without sufficient troops to deal with this. And keep in mind, these Zealots, level 3 weapons, level 2 in armor now, just melting through this. If Zealots are a knife, they are now hot. Mineral only going to get devastated. And Rancor, in the span of a minute and a half, having his main obliterated, can't even produce Hydralisks, had to create just defensive units with Zerglings. Losing his mineral only, a huge swing in events from Jedi 1. Really throwing, I don't even sure I want to call that a one-two punch. It was just a, a rapid series of blows. Psy storming, not catching that high lurker, but able to do damage. Let's see if an observer can sneak in here or if he can just finish this off with Psy storm. Looks like that lair is going to stand. But in the midst of this, the Dragoons turning around and doing additional, just going to walk up here and get additional damage done. It looks like the Hydro Sten was rebuilt at this location. So it's like the Hydro Sten got rebuilt and might just get picked off once again. Brief reprieve from Rancor as he has wiped out all of the observers. And there are lurkers on the front. Three o'clock base is up, not yet saturated for Jedi 1. He's already in position to go ahead and take that six o'clock as well. I think that shuttle got dropped. I assume the Dark Templar uh, just ended up getting wiped out in the midst of it. Upper left-hand base is starting to mine, so Rancor trying to find ways to sneak back into this match. However, as soon as an Observer sneaks up with this army, I don't know that Rancor can hold this Protoss militia back. High Templar joining the fray as well. This High Templar is just going to walk right up and drop a Psy Storm, it looks like. Maybe? No, it's just going to walk up and die. Never mind. That's a statement. That's that's scary. When your opponent's like, yeah, one of our most valuable gas units, I want you to just walk up straight up there, stare at them, and die. <laughs> Twice. So you know how serious we are. Still no Observer. There's the Observers. Starting to move forward. Rancor at half the supply currently. Hive Tech is up somehow for Rancor. Working on adrenal glands, considering he is in recovery mode and mostly having to rely on Zerglings as a defense. And there's just an overabundance of Dragoons. I think that's a good play. Unfortunately, I don't think that upgrade is going to be finished by the time this game ends. Because that Evolution Chamber taken out. Zealots and Dragoons marching in. And Archon can't even get to the front. It's pinned in. He's got 20 kills. Wow. I'm wondering how much of that was from... Do, does anyone know this? Do, did the High Templar, when they merge, get kind of the combined kill count? That would be interesting. Zealots cutting off reinforcements at the ramp. The natural expansion completely exposed. There's GG from Rancor. So he's going to move on to the loser's match. Honestly, after the opening, I thought Rancor was going to take this one. But Jedi won with a nice win. We will move on to the final. Jedi won advances to the round of eight. Hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for listening.